Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks to the organisers for giving me the opportunity to address you this morning. I'm going to talk a little bit at the beginning about the general environment for foreign direct investment in Ireland, and then specifically in the life sciences and the biopharma area. So the job, we were set up about 40 years ago to attract foreign direct investment to Ireland, and the main market for that is the US. The US accounts for over 500 of the 1,000 plus companies we have in our portfolio, but by value in terms of you know, capital intensity, about 72% of FDI comes from uh, the US. And what Ireland tends to do over time is concentrate on a relatively limited number of areas, but where we do concentrate in areas go for an exceptionally high market share. And in terms of significance and where we see the growth, certainly uh, if you look at it, um, the life sciences area incorporating the uh, medical devices, healthcare services, biopharma and pharma, um, that's the biggest in the portfolio. It's biggest by way of capital intensity, by way of employment, by way of corporation tax and by way of exports. So the life science is very much to the fore. And you know, we've nine of the top 10 pharma, we've 17 of the top 25 medical devices. If you go into the technology sector, the IT sector, the IBMs, the Apples, we've eight out of the top 10. In financial services, we'd have half of the world's leading financial institutions. You know, People like State Street have over 2,000 people here in Ireland, uh, likewise City. And then a great growth area is the digital media, the digital content, you know, the Google, the eBay, the PayPal space. The top 10 in the world are in Ireland, and some of them very large. People like Google have over 2,500 people servicing 62 different uh, languages. So that high market share where we do go after sectors is something that we want to trade on. And within that, um, the impact, in actual fact, some new figures come out yesterday, the APC, that's the survey of expenditure in the economy. In the IDA portfolio, the 1,000 plus companies, exports last year increased actually to 122 billion euros. So 73% of all exports come from the multinationals um, that are in the I I IDA portfolio. They spend about 19 billion in the economy, of which 7 billion is payroll and as regards R&D spend from an industry point of view again they account for over 70% of it and also account for over 70% of all corporation tax. So from that point of view, the conference today and a lot of talk that there was earlier on about maintaining what we have, uh, that's a very, very important part of the work that we do because if you have nine of the top 10 or 25 of the top 50 pharma and biopharma companies, clearly you want to make sure those companies that are here, uh, that they stay here, that they constantly transform their operations. Um, when I go back to uh, the comment about the US market being the largest, we have a network of six offices in Boston, New York, Atlanta, Chicago, uh, Mountain View, and Irvine in Orange County. And in Europe, we're represented in Paris, Frankfurt, and London. But over the last number of years, we've added a number of offices in the new growth markets, you know, places like Shenzhen and Shanghai, uh, Bangalore and Mumbai, uh, Singapore, Moscow, and San Paolo. So we want to make sure that we continue to drive the traditional markets of the US and Europe, uh, but get much more active in the emerging markets. And within the six key sectors we go after, what we're targeting are global business services. That could be anything from supply chain management, IP management, financial shared services, technical support, regulatory affairs, anything you can bundle together. Uh, high value manufacturing, particularly in the biopharma area, you know, you're looking at a minimum spend of a million euro per employee. In many cases, it could be two to three million. So very high skilled, very, uh, uh, very, uh, very capital intensive. And the research, development and innovation, uh, the budget, the grant budget that IDA has to support the total portfolio across all of the sectors is about 85 million euro. And about 60% of that goes into R&D. 
but uh, in terms of the life sciences, it's very much the funding, the D&M, the development and manufacturing co-located. Um, often, the, you know, people say, OK, it's very easy to talk about a J&J &J or a Pfizer or a Nabbit because these are the well-known brand names. Uh, and indeed, they're the ones that make the biggest impact in the foreign direct investment portfolio. But in recent years, we've been getting a lot of business out of the second tier companies. Second tier, we would define with revenues of 100 million to 750 million out of the pharma industry or the biopharma. Recently, we had Sangart. Sangart is, a, 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 they don't yet have product or they have very little product on the market. They have a market cap of about 4 billion, but they've uh, practically no revenues. They've just acquired a Pfizer Biologics pilot plant down, out in Cork. So you know a number of companies, Alir in the life sciences or uh, American Medical Systems. So an increasing part of the portfolio is in the second tier. And interestingly, in uh, January 2010, we set up a new group to start uh, to target emerging companies. Emerging companies would typically have no revenues or a max of 30 million, would have been through one or two rounds of VC or private equity funding. Uh, and uh, since that group were formed in January, uh, we have a team in Dublin, Limerick, uh, Frankfurt, Mountain View, Atlanta and New York, 45 companies across the portfolio have come to Ireland, a number in life sciences. I suppose the one of great hope would be Sangart, who are investing in a new biologics facility down in Carrick Tool. They're acquiring uh, a strategic site from IDA there. So active in the large, the second tier and the emerging companies. Now, uh, what we are seeing is since about January 2011, the flow of foreign direct investment into Ireland has been at a greater level than at any time since about 2002. So uh, right across the portfolio, a couple of key high-profile projects, PayPal, who already have 1,400 people in Dublin, adding 1,000 people in their new centre in Dundalk, planning that, MasterCard setting up one of three global technology hubs uh, purchased near New York, Singapore and Dublin are the uh, three locations. People like SAP adding about 250 uh, people to their Dublin and Galway operations or people like Apple adding over 500 people in Cork to exceed 3,000 now or Accenture setting up a global analytics hub. Um, but quite clearly, to go back to the importance of the pharma and the biopharma sector, um, if you look at it, uh, more than any other business that comes to Ireland, it's global in nature. While I say the technology sector and the, the digital media, digital content is almost exclusively dominated by US corporations, the pharma, biopharma, if you look at all of the big American ones are, 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 are here, but then if you look at uh, GSK or Roche or UCB, uh, or Novartis, all of those players, and then you can add Takeda, uh, you can uh, add Estella, so it's truly global in nature. And you know, some of the second tier players that recently came to Ireland, Hovion from Portugal, already have over 100 people in the plant that they acquired uh, from, from Pfizer. Um, but of course, the development and manufacturing is one side of the business. What we're very, very keen to attract to Ireland is an increasing volume of uh, services, business services. And if you look, one of the first ones to do it was in financial shared services. Pfizer have a team of about 250 people doing their European financial services. Within the space of about 12 months, Last year, Lilly, Merck and Gilead all added financial shared services uh, to their operations. Lilly already have over 100 people in Cork in the financial shared services. And only a couple of weeks ago, a South African company called Aspen, a generics company, but interestingly, GSK have an 18% shareholding in Aspen. They've set up an EMEA hub handling IP, supply chain, uh, regulatory affairs out of the greater Dublin area. 
So the industry, you know, everybody knows about all of the issues about the patent cliff and the overcapacities, the mergers and acquisitions that have taken place. And, you know, there was a period of time, I'd say, from the mid-2007 up to uh, maybe 2000, uh, mid-2010, sorry, uh, up until early 2011, the industry had gone quiet on capital spend. You know, if you look at it, the Pfizer-Wyatt merger threw up, I don't know, maybe 20, 30, 40 excess plants that many of them were disposed of around the world and took up capacity that would have been new build. But certainly we've seen buoyancy in the first six to nine months of this year and a couple of, of companies Lily who put their first biologics facility into Kinsale and or started it in 2007 uh, arising out of uh, an acquisition of Imclone in the oncology sector um, they're building a new facility I think it's about a quarter of a million square feet over 400 million Dollars and it's a development and manufacturing facility. Uh, Allergan building a new Botox facility, but other facilities as well. Uh, acquiring a big site from IDA down in, in Westport, spending over $300 million. Amgen out in Pottery Road. If you go out to that site now, there's huge construction work taking place. I think there's about 600 people on site due to the construction, investing about $200 million. Um, in the small molecule area, in the high containment, uh, high potency, uh, Abbott are putting in over $100 million into their site. And a really interesting project, because there's a lot of talk about competitiveness in Ireland, there's no business more competitiveness driven than the generics business. And Milan are investing $500 million between their Dublin and their Galway sites. The injectables in Galway, the generics in Dublin, but they're also acquiring um, a respiratory franchise uh, from Pfizer and all of the development of that is going to be done in Dublin and they're building a team of 60 people in supply chain management. They had a much smaller team in Switzerland but I think we can take great confidence of somebody like Mylan is investing that scale of money in their Irish operations. Uh, this has already been covered this morning, but it's meant to demonstrate clearly the initiatives to help the business to drive them. So I won't repeat what was spoken about earlier. But it is important, you know, what attracts business to Ireland? Well, you know, I think you could say for any business, what sort of a track record do you have? Peer companies look at their peers and how strong is the track record and Ireland's track record in the life sciences is exceptionally strong you know what's the technology capability in the country and again it's very very strong in the sector uh, the talent pool Ireland scores consistently well in that context and of course our 12.5 percent tax rate and then if you do R&D which includes process uh, you can qualify for the 25 percent and tax credit I mean the fact that we're in English speaking, EU access, ease of doing business, that's all very well, but that only gets you so far with the nature of global competition. And I suppose Ireland's value proposition, we have to constantly enhance it. And a couple of things where we'd score exceptionally well would be in the pharma and biopharma, the FDA track record. You know, on a scoring of one of 100 points, you probably get 10 to 15 percent uh, for the FDA track record. Contrast that, even as we speak yesterday, there was another high profile global pharma company run into regulatory problems. There are a number, at least six around the world at the moment, that are being fined between 100 and 750 million dollars for breaches of manufacturing practice. Um, the fact that we've invested over 60 million euro in the National Institute of Biopharma, you know, uh, concentrating on uh, the making of biologics but also the training of the workforce all what Ruth spoke about in the Science, Found Science Foundation Ireland initiatives and if a company is looking at establishing here uh, they're looking at well where can we get 20 megawatts of power a million gallons of water a day 50 to 60 acres IDA has assembled six of those sites around the country if I take the case of Merck when they were putting their vaccines facility into car it was a ready-made site uh, you know there are 350 people 
working in that facility today. There was nobody three to four years ago. So the fact that that facility was there with all of the utilities meant a very, very uh, uh, quick startup. The cluster is an extremely powerful marketing uh, message. You know, we reckon in development and manufacturing of biologics that Ireland is the biggest cluster outside of the eastern states of the United States uh, and the overall regulatory environment with the medicine sport. So a lot goes into making Ireland attractive. And while as if you looked at Ireland's rankings in the availability of credit in the Irish market, the state of national debt, uh, the state of the banking system would score very poorly. But fast forward to what's important to the big multinationals of this world, it's how competitive is a country. And certainly the pressures in the, you know, with the retail, the construction have led to, for instance, constructing a biologics facility today would be about 35% cheaper from the construction construction element than it would have been in 2007. And you can see the IBM report shows we score very highly per 100,000 to population the second largest number of jobs in the, in the world after Singapore. But when you put it by value, it's actually number one. And the World Competitiveness Report scores this very, very highly in areas that matter to investment decisions that are being taken. So the final slide is just a little bit of uh, uh, outlook. You know, this applies to the uh, totality of our portfolio. Um, we would say that there's a good immediate pipeline in areas like technology, life sciences, digital media, and international financial services. However, you know, the European market is flat, and that's not a, a good outlook. And uh, particularly, the main source of investment, the US, would be looking in a pretty a pretty dampened view of the European economy. And unless Europe sorts itself out within the next few months, then I think you will see fall-offs in investment level. And from our own point of view, that across the portfolio at any one time, we need to have over 100 investments in play right across the portfolio to make sure we hit our targets. So as ever, the constant need is to be out in the global marketplace, you know, pipeline generation, and conversion. So thanks very much for your attention and appreciate the opportunity to address you.